sorry, Dave, I, I know this is going to come across as a silly question, but uh, are, you, uh, are you planning on coming to work today, mate, just out of curiosity? You wait, there'll be an excuse, you wait. Guarantee it. All right, I'm guessing he's either had a crash. His radio is on because I can see it on my radio, so I know he's listening. So I'm guessing he's either had a crash or his radio's playing up. Ah, he's literally right behind me. He should be pulling in now. Luckily for me, I've got a tracker on the van so I can see where he is. It's not working. Ah! Oh, that old chestnut. I'm normally early. <laughs> no, you're not, mate. You're normally fucking late. No, I'm actually normally early now. <laughs> All right, let me park this up. Well, you two wearing the corporate colours, mate. I've got to be honest. I'm mildly impressed, I'll be honest. <laughs> Only mildly. Right, today, you can't actually see where we're working upstairs. We haven't got recording rights there, unfortunately. But it is a good time to check Dave's van. This is just a spot check, mate, actually. So we can, we can open that, <laughs> we can open that back up. It's actually not looking too bad. Your water tank needs emptying as well. Nah. All right, well, that's, that's a pass. <laughs> I see you've, you've parked nice and close to the yeah, back. Can't so back, yeah, can't open you know, the back doors. Yeah, it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> mm, all right. I've noticed that my van, that one over there, fantastically clean, always neat and presentable. This one, covered in scratches and, scratches and dents. Uh, there's a dent, he's put a dent there. This is all broken, see? Okay, no, let's clarify on this. I was hit by a lorry, okay? Not at fault, not at fault, a lorry hit me. He is actually, we've got it on the dash cam. He is actually telling you what I'll do. I'll leave this, I'll leave a clip, because we got these, when we bought these, they came with factory fitted dash cams and he did actually, to be fair, he did catch it on a dash cam and it is actually not his fault. I'll, I'll leave it now, I'll do an overlay of the video now and you can see. That dent is 100% me though. I, that I, is 100% you. Hold you, my left, hands up to you that. left the lock open. I put the key in, unlocked it. It was kind of halfway, and then when it opened, there's always a reason. Ah, oh, park car, of course. Yes, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. Both, both of mine, no scratches at all. Um, <laughs> should I, we talk about your passenger yeah. door. Yeah. <laughs> passenger door. Yeah. What's on my passenger door? A big massive dent. Ah. Yeah. I put that dent. I don't know if you can see it. I put that dent in it. Literally, it was the second day I got the van. I opened the door, and there was a lamp post right there, and I just opened it straight into it. Just not thinking. Uh, we've still got to go to ITS to actually get um, to get all everything kitted, but it's, there's not really a lot of organisation going on here at the moment. It's just everything's in tubs at the second. We're playing catch up at the moment. We've not had two vans. We've yeah. barely had one. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time we've actually had some sort of organisation. So it is getting there slowly. This is a, a money draining exercise. So sort of doing it when I've got the cash. The only thing I did add was these little lights here on the roof. I haven't actually wired them yet. I've just put a zip tie on them for a second, but I bought those. They put, the Sortimo guys did put the lights at the back, but we put the, I put these ones on yesterday. He, yeah. Dave, Dave's actually got some to go on his van, but I put these on yesterday. Um, and they're supposed to be 72 watts, but there is no way that's a 72. <laughs> when I saw the size of them, I think I'll, I'll test it. When I wire them up later, I've got to wire them to the rear work lights. I will test to see, but I think they probably pull at best about 20 watts, if that, but they'll do. Yeah, so that's the idea. It just makes it a bit easier when you're loading in the street and stuff, rather than having the one which pulled down at the back. It's definitely a better system, I think, yeah. It's a lot easier, especially if you're short as well, like me. Yeah, that's definitely quicker. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better system, yeah. Much quicker. Anyway, the footage you're about to see now um, is in Austria. When I went out to Austria for a couple of weeks the other, I went out there for a couple of weeks, I don't know, two weeks ago, when I was coming back from the airport, I, so I don't know, I lost the SD card. So the nice smooth transition I had in mind, I now haven't got. I'm not gonna waste the footage. So uh, this next bit is the rest of the time in Austria. Enjoy it, see you in a bit. Right, hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is now day, I don't know, day four or five. My clothes keep changing because I'm, uh, the days of the week are changing. So uh, I'm out again, just, uh, just exploring, you know, just going out for a walk in the afternoon. I just go out for three, four hours and just go and have a bimble around and see what I can find. Um, this was quite interesting. 
I've ended up walking for hours, and this is where I've this is where I've come to. So this basic, obviously, I mean, this is obviously a railway line, which is now no longer a railway line, and they just put ballast over the top of the track or whatever. But this isn't being used, right? And anyway, that's the entrance to the tunnel, obviously by default. Um, and anyway, over here, just for the record, right? I know I'm sad, all right, and I take my GoPros on holiday and my drone and all that. I like it, okay, and I like seeing how shit works in other countries. I find it really interesting. They've got this switch gear here. So, I mean, I'm not entirely sure. I don't actually know why, I don't know what this is for, why it would be outside a tunnel. I'm not sure why you'd have these commando sockets. I, I don't know. Um, and the brand of the breakers is Mola, but I mean, it's all dead. None of it, none of it works. It's all dead. Yeah, all of it's dead. The RCD, I'm, I'm guessing the RCD isn't faulty. I'm guessing it's just got no power. Yeah, it's all dead. It doesn't do anything. Um, so I'm not sure why you've got three phase. I don't know what these three phase sockets are. Maybe it's, I don't know, for track side work or something. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. But then you've got this, this telephone point, And that's what, none of this looks very old. This doesn't exactly look like an old installation. I mean, like that's, you know, this, the, the, this RCD unit here has seen a bit of wear and tear. But even if you look at the Unistrut, it doesn't look that old. It looks, you know, it's all relatively new. Which begs the question, why, uh, I don't see, why, why is this so new, uh, you know? Anyway, this is, uh, this phone box, anyway. So you open this up. Um, not truff, not truff, I don't know what that means, but. I mean, it's all dead, it doesn't seem to do anything. But it's interesting because it's really well kept. It doesn't look doesn't look like it's had a hard life at all. I mean, to be honest, if I have a test gear and screwdrivers, I'd be taking that apart wanting to have a proper look at it, but uh, I'm afraid I haven't. But uh, if anybody knows the reason why they've got these command, I'm guessing it's for like line side track work or something. I'm guessing when they want to plug in equipment and stuff, I, I don't know. But it looks very well kept. I don't know why they haven't taken it all out because they've gone through all the effort of getting rid of all the track and stuff. So why not take all this out? Do you know, I don't understand why keep it. Maybe they want it for future use or something, I don't know. This is basically how horror stories start. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> bye bye world, it's been nice knowing you. Super grainy footage now because uh, I've had to bump the ISO right up. They've got these little archways inside the tunnel here and you've got these little boxes inside and I don't know what they are. It's like FP200 almost, it's, uh, I don't know what it is, it's like FP200 I think. I'm not entirely convinced this is a smart idea, what I'm doing. I'm guessing this is like where all the power cables are, this block is broken, but that's all the power cables that run to service the tunnel I guess, I don't know. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. That's the outside of the tunnel and they've got the same thing this end. If anybody knows, chuck it in the comments below. I've got to find a way to get the fuck out of this place. Okay, I've <laughs> I've arrived at what I think. I came out from over there. That was where the tunnel came out, and I've just walked along this track bed here. And I've arrived at what I think is a train station, or what was a train station. I think they've now converted it into this really nice house. That is one big pile of fish plates. <laughs> I thought I'd share that with you. I thought that was quite interesting, sort of a quirky little thing you don't come across every day. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm just in the process of walking home, right? And um, do you remember, I mean, this was in the news back in like 2007, this big container ship overturned or something and a load of containers washed up on, um, on the English, uh, it was Branscombe Beach, I think it was. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, load, there used to be this law that you know if you found something on a beach it was yours and I mean I don't think that's the case anymore but of course when all these containers all washed up onto the beach I mean like all the every, I mean I'd have done the same thing you just you know you, you pilfer as much as you can you know it's a free-for-all and anyway there was a container full of these bikes it washed up on the beach and they had to get this out they had to put a front wheel on it to get it to, to, and they had to push it all the way up and they pushed it home and uh, anyway BMW didn't appreciate that very much and I think it was like two years worth of legal battles and eventually BMW were like you know what keep the fucking bike it's yours and uh, 
they uh, an, an artist bought it off them and uh, it's now here <laughs> in a glass box on the side of the Danube so there's actually on the back of the bike is this little uh, plaque I'll uh, if I do that you can pause it you can pause the screen and then you can read it beautiful bike though Okay, continuing with, you know, um, electrics on tour with Tom Nagy, this is a classic example. In fact, over here's a better example, right? We go through all this effort in the UK of when we do pipe work outside and shit, it's all gonna be formed nice and neatly and you can't have any cabling exposed, otherwise the YouTube bandwagon brigade will just, they'll just slate your name. Here, they seem to be a lot more lax on it. So like you can see here, they haven't bothered, they, they don't bother putting sets on the bends. They just, they just put straight bits of pipe in and that's it. And that's not the only example of it. There's, I mean, there's loads of it. There's another one up there. They just don't, uh, they don't seem to, to find it necessary to set the corners and stuff. Which begs the question, why do we do it? If we, why do we make so much effort in the UK to do it? Because clearly they don't bother doing it here in Austria and obviously no one's ever died from it so why are we doing it do you know what i mean i just don't understand because obviously it must be okay because they're doing it here so so if anyone knows the answer do me a favor and chuck that in the comments as well because i honestly, i honestly don't understand why we why do we go to such great lengths with with all this stuff when you know it clearly isn't needed you know and it's not like they're being slapdash or anything, it's just this is how they do it, but clearly no one's ever died from it, so why do we do it? Answers below.